going to bring in a special guest. Uh, we have Nathaniel Nat Glover. He was the first black sheriff in Jacksonville, Florida, and the first black sheriff in the Deep South after the Reconstruction era. Good morning to you, Mr. Glover. Thank you so much for joining us on Live Now from Fox. If you could explain to us, um, I guess, first off, what it means to you being a black sheriff, and then when you actually became one after that Reconstruction era, why was it so important during that time? Well, actually, um, when you look at the, the state of Florida, we, of course, have 67 counties. And the sheriffs in those counties had, I mean, just a very, very high profile. And, of course, the whole notion of having an African-American sheriff was just something that was unheard of. But the, the fact that we were able to accomplish that here in Jacksonville, Florida, was uh, very, very significant, but because then after that, we had uh, five or six other African-American sheriffs elected in the state of Florida. If you could kind of paint a picture for me uh, during that time, I'm sure you yourself and your counterparts were fighting for certain civil rights, then being a black sheriff, uh, trying to help others when it came to proper policing. Um, what was it like during that time as far as being able to do your job, but also being respected around white counterparts who maybe might have felt like you shouldn't have been in the position? Uh, certainly your instinct is right on because even when I was elected and when I was running for sheriff, I did not have uh, much uh, support from the uh, white uh, uh, law enforcement community. As a matter of fact, um, the, the black officers were somewhat apprehensive about uh, supporting me as well because they didn't think I had a chance of winning. So um, you, you just had to go directly to the public take uh, uh, a platform to them with that appeal to them. And I was able to do that. And I was able to be elected in the first primary. And it, it took all races, I mean, black, white, and Republican, Democrats, North Siders and West Siders and all. And that I made a pledge to myself, I was gonna do everything necessary not to let them down. Let's talk about some of the highs of you being sheriff during that time and some of the lows. Are there any stories or images you remember from during that time that stick with you today during your tenure as um, sheriff? Oh, yeah. I, I, I had, um, when I was sheriff, I had my uh, whole dive team who mostly uh, white officers decided they did not want to be uh, uh, on the dive team any longer, and they and they quit. I mean, they just uh, uh, left that assignment. Now, it wasn't like they were leaving the department. They they just went back to their regular duty. So, but I had another officer walk into my office, um, uh, and he said to me, uh, "I'll have your dive team ready to go in the morning and and the next day." And he was, there. and this was a, another white officer. So um, that was one of those situations. Clearly, it was a a, a racist uh, a notion, but uh, it was just one of those things uh, I had to uh, overcome. And we were able to uh, overcome all of those challenges because over the eight years I was in office, we reduced crime in Jacksonville seventeen percent. Wow, I'm sure I'm sure it's an honor for you and those you worked alongside to have that percentage to share today. Um, Saturday, marking 60 years for the March on Washington, you particularly as you're a member of law enforcement, how have you seen that propel in those 60 years? Um, or do you feel like we have a ways to go? Well, we certainly have uh, some distance to go, but um, we have come uh, quite a a ways. I mean, when you look at the leaders who pull that march together, certainly it has meant uh, a great deal to the um, African American uh, community. Uh, we've made uh, strides in, um, in in neighborhoods. We've made strides in access to higher education. We've um, made strides in in all areas. But again, I always feel like. Every time we do, somehow 
uh, figure out a way to move the goalpost further down the goal uh, near uh, down the field. So um, we have, and we should acknowledge that, great strides, but we still do have a ways to go. When people think of policing back during the era of civil rights, some of the images that come to mind are the water hoses by um, police officers, the dogs that were sicked onto members as they were just walking down the street. Um, I've, obviously, many people join an organization to change it. Um, did you ever hear conversations of people wishing things would go back during that time? Or would you just say you were there to propel and change what proper policing looked like? Well, actually, um, proper policing, of course, meant at that time to enforce the laws that was in effect at that time. And police officers was a, a visual of those suppressive laws. So when you had people conducting sit-ins who were actually vying to try to get the right to even just go to uh, a lunch counter and have a sandwich, it was police officers that had to enforce that those segregated sites. So it was just not an image for law enforcement. But what now that we have uh, broke through those barriers and we have police officers who are working in the community, they have the opportunity to connect with the community and change that image. And that's what it takes. It takes connection, uh, proper policing. Let's talk about policing today when it comes to on the local level, uh, state or even federal level, um, Mr. Glover. So, you know, we've heard different terms defund the police department. We've seen images of officer involved shootings, uh, images of people being shot who we've come to find out were unarmed uh, men, unarmed black men to be specific. And um, when you see that, do you feel like um, strides have been made since you first became the first black sheriff in Jacksonville? Or do you think we're kind of taking a step back no I, I think that what we what we have now is social media and every person you see walking around with a, a camera in their hand so now what you see is a number of those things that we've been talking about uh you actually see on camera and you see those things played out on the national media. So actually, you are seeing a lot of things that have been happening for years. So we are going to have to address those things. And I think we are addressing them. Make no mistake about it, most police officers are, are very dedicated uh, law enforcement officers and will actually give their life to save yours. But we do have some officers who uh, we need to purge from the profession. And I think too often we have police leaders and sheriffs who tolerate those officers. And to be honest with you, they contaminate all of the rest of well-meaning, honest uh, officers as well. So many great points you just made. I kind of want to dissect them if we can, Mr. Glover. So you mentioned officers tolerating uh, negative behavior from other officers. Is that what kind of is um, inferred when people mention the good old boy system when it comes to policing? Yes, it's, it's, it's kind of a fraternity thing where um, you don't want to be one of those officers who actually uh, goes back to and and complain about an officer or uh, tell on an officer who uh, was uh, conduct themselves in a, a misconduct way. So as a result of that, because then you will be called a snitch amongst your peers. So now you, you have some laws changing, which going to be a big help because now if you are with an officer or see an officer's do some things that's illegal and actually uh, improper, then there could be uh, legal consequences. You and that person uh, not, if that person did not report it.
you also mentioned uh, social media, the era of social media. So we all know that if something happens, someone is going to pick up that cell phone and record. But on the flip side, there's accountability when it comes to the officers, you know, those body cams. I'm sure it's something you never thought in your wildest dreams would be able to happen when it comes to policing. But if you can talk about how the two actually work together as far as he said, she said, uh, the officers being able to have those body cams so we can know from their vantage point what happened. Yeah, and, and of course, you got to make certain that the officer actually record the incident because I know that uh, there's there are some instances where the body cam did not have some uh, of the facts that should have been recorded, but um, that's where we are in law enforcement. We should be an open book. So our conduct is something that should be subject to review. And there should be no hesitation or reservation um, about that. So I think um, that's a good thing. We are in an area, era where we have some questions coming up about the integrity of law enforcement and some of the images are fed into that and a lack of trust. But I also believe when we get through this period, I think we are going to be better as an organization. Mr. Glover, you mentioned a book. You're actually an author. Many people don't know this. The book Striving for Justice. Um, many people sing, and if they didn't already know, you're a very eloquent speaker. What can people grasp and gain from that book when it comes to civil rights back then and civil rights today? Well, what they can gain back from the, uh, from the book is that I had many challenges but I also had great ambition. And when I talk about striving for justice, I, I wanted to bring to the attention some of the challenges of uh, the criminal justice system, uh, some of which we've just talked about. But I also know that African-Americans pe and people of color are disproportionately negatively affected by that. We have a disproportionate number being incarcerated, prosecuted, and arrested. So, uh, but we can fix that. And I think it has to do with implicit bias. And I would like to see that addressed so that we can be, as a, as a whole, uh, we see, see, because law enforcement in this country is, we are not an occupied force. We are a force of law enforcement that we work with the community. So you got to win their trust and you got to do the things that would no, never question your integrity. Um, when it comes to Saturday, so 60 years for the March on Washington, um, many people, I spoke with Congresswoman Eleanor Norton yesterday, who is actually one of the founders. She said that many things could be taken away from that very first March on Washington when it comes to peaceful protest and things not happening to take away from the message of what's being conveyed when it comes to civil rights. If you could speak on um, that day back in the 1960s when that um, march was going on, when that peaceful protest was going on. What could be taken away from that today when we see many protests turning into riots and the entire message being um, convoluted with negativity? Well, actually, um, we, we are always better off to not contribute to the problem, but make certain we bring attention to the problem. The March on Washington and Martin Luther King's speech I mean, that's one of those situations that will stand out in history. And I think it made uh, one of the greatest impacts on this country as it relates to civil rights and, you know, the integrity of the country. Because fact of the matter is, America has always been an example to the world. And of course, we certainly want to maintain that. But we got some challenges. We got some challenges when it comes to the minorities in this country, and we certainly are working on them. And I think we are getting closer to uh, the goal line, but we, we do have a ways to go. You say we're getting closer to the goal line. Um, what will we need to do so that we can get closer a little quicker, Mr. Glover? Well, um, you, we want to have to um, go through the process that, you know, 
actually uh, allows us to be a voice to be heard. And that is continue to go to the polls and put the people in who will have the mind and heart and the spirit to uh, do the right thing. We still do have a radical component here in our country that want to go back to the old days. And of course, I think they're just trying to maintain this whole notion of white privilege. So we want to make certain that we continue to vote and continue to put the people in office that will facilitate that process to keep us going forward. As we um, get closer to wrapping this interview, Mr. Glover, as you think that Saturday only days away for the March on Washington, what are you most excited about as we celebrate this 60th anniversary? What are you most looking forward to? I'm most looking forward to the attention that um, it's getting and we can, we can just take a look at how far we've come, but we also got to keep in mind that we still have uh, a ways to go. And what I am seeing and I am encouraged about is some of the uh, young people in, in the white race uh, 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 actually taking more of an active role in correcting some of those problems we have in our country. And, and that's most encouraging to me. I like how you said that it's not a white problem, it's not a black problem, it's an American problem. And it's going to take all of us to correct it when it comes to proper policing. Anything you, else you'd like to add, Mr. Glover, before we let you go? I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to a statement I made earlier. And when you think of the, um, the United States of America, and our democratic um, government, and uh, the fact that we are the envy of many countries in this world. And we want to make certain that we do not, you know, air out the, the worst laundry in the international scene, like the incident we had with the storming of the Capitol. So I want to make certain that we all contribute to that, black, white, and we use the best talents we can to maintain that image in this world. Well, Nathaniel Nat Glover, thank you so much for joining us. An icon when it comes to the civil rights community and also an author. If people want to pick up your book, I'm sure they're hearing you and they're like, I want to see what more this man has to say. How can they get it? Drivingforjustice.com. And you can also go online to Amazon. The, the book is on the market at this particular time. We will have the official launch Friday. Mr. Glover, thank you again for joining us on Live Now from Fox. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And of course, we will be checking in with you after we celebrate that Saturday ceremony to see what you gain from that and what you think should be different. Thank you again. Thank you.